Welcome back to Seaside Survival, it's me, Ryan. Are you ready for another exciting episode of Seaside Survival? I know I am. Today we're going to talk about... Here, let me get some let me get some food on the grill here. Today we're going to talk about something very exciting, and that is... Gradients! Yes, that's right, gradients of copper. We've got waxed... Oxidized copper, weathered copper, exposed copper, and a regular old block of copper. And together they are a cool gradient. Thing is, it takes a while to get this copper oxidized. So today we've made an incredible build over by the seaside that I am very excited to show you. Um, <laughs> however, we're waiting for oxidation. It takes a while to get from here to here. Uh, but eventually, this build is going to have a very, very cool-looking gradient of oxidized copper. Aha! Our food's done. Let's grab some honey while we're at home here. Remember, I've got these beehives set up over here on the hill. We're going to need a lot of beeswax if we're going to be working with copper, and we sure are going to be working with copper. Now, one thing um, that has been on my mind in this world is that we are living by the seaside. It's seaside survival after all, but we haven't done too much with the seaside, right? We have our lighthouse, we have our portal, a big tree, some mushrooms. We've been doing a lot with organics and making this place feel like a home, and that's great. Uh, but you know what? What about the sea? We can't forget about the sea. So this is what I've been excited to show you. Let's check it out. What seaside area is complete without a sweet boathouse and a fishing dock? So I've made... An incredible little pier down here with all the stuff that we need a great fishing dock a place to park our boats um, and and have been doing a lot with uh, with making the seaside more oceanic uh-huh and then there's these guys so this is it this is our this is our dock we've got an uh, a brewing station over here with all the stuff that we'll need for brewing. Um, that's a cool thing to do while we're fishing, let things brew up. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got our barrels here labeled with, uh, with potion stuff here, tons of fish. I've been doing a little fishing. Um, got a lot of Nautilus shells. No, six, okay, so not a ton, but we, <laughs> we got some Nautilus shells got a few fishing rods and the idea is to get a few different enchants on the fishing rods so depending on what we want to try to catch whether it's loot or fish or whatever we can pick the right rod for the job I've been fi I've been finding some name tags in the water here uh, and some bows actually too nothing crazy we've got our boats here uh, that's more just for decoration but uh, it's saddles when we catch saddles and over here we've got our fishing dock. Places to park our, but what are you doing here? You go like that, uh -huh. Okay, so we've got our boats, we've got our fishing. Uh, yeah, it's great. Things are looking a lot more aquatic here by the seaside. We've got a little loft area up top here, and as this oxidizes and we get it into the proper gradient, it's going to look really sweet up here too. Got a little boardwalk and a bed here so we can sleep, some storage, and, uh, and a crafting bench. All the necessities really for someone who's going to live in a boathouse. 
We're not planning on living in the boathouse, but you never know when the night gets late and the fish aren't biting, maybe you need a nap. This is our junk bin. We, <laughs> we catch random stuff from time to time, and I don't necessarily want to have an entire storage spot for leather boots that we found in the water. So that's our junk bin. Now what is a good uh, ocean front area without a proper beach? Now we've got cliffs. This does not ease out nicely into the water. We've, we've got cliffs here. So there shouldn't be a huge sprawling beach, but I did want a little bit of sand. So over here, we've built in this cool little sandy area, this bank along the cliff that eventually is going to wrap all the way around to the little fishing village that's below our regular village. So this path goes over to here. We've got this cool waterfall that was there. Um, and I have this little bay and we may do something with that at some point. Oh, don't jump. Don't jump. Playing with some bridge concepts using extinguished campfires. Looks like a, a cool little rugged bridge. Uh, I'm experimenting with that. So eventually this sandy shore is going to wrap all the way around and go over to the fishing village here and we'll incorporate that into the lower lands seaside over here. Now one thing that I ran into while I was making potions was that I needed fermented spider eye. And fermented spider eye needs brown mushrooms in order to, uh, to ferment. And I didn't have any brown mushrooms. I had a lot of red mushrooms, but not quite so much brown ones. So I made this cool little cave over here so that we'd have an area dark enough for mushrooms to grow. So I've utilized mostly dirt and some podzol here. Podzol is great for growing mushrooms, um, but I don't have too much of it. I actually don't have a source for podzol. I just bought this stuff off of the Wandering Trader. See how it's great for growing mushrooms? Um, so yeah, as I find more podzol, I'll replace this dirt with that. I think it looks good for a mushroom cave. Um, or as I find more wandering traders, that will give me podzol for emeralds. I will buy more. Uh, I, I want to fill this cave eventually, but, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. I've relied pretty heavily on candles in here for light because mushrooms need pretty low light to grow, but I also don't want any monsters to spawn in here. So uh, the candles put off just enough light to keep the monsters away, uh, but not too much light so that the mushrooms will actually grow. And so far, the yield's been great. Of course, I've been over in this area working on the dock, so the chunk has been loaded in and mushrooms have been growing. That helps too. Let's go ahead and put our mushrooms in the bin here. And we'll brew up some potions later on. Next order business. Fishing. You think I could get the llamas from over here? No. But what about from here? Yes! Haha! <laughs> Come here, llama! Ooh, Nautilus shell. Hey, if I could ride this llama while I'm fishing, can I ride the llama that's in a boat and fish? I can.
Let's fry up some fish that we just caught. And hey, what are you doing here? Let's fry up some fish that we just caught and later on we'll have tons of food. Okay, well, the whole episode is not going to be about fishing. Not this time anyway. We have some business to attend to. This is going to be an action-packed episode. We'll come back to that boathouse uh, and continue to fish, continue to make it really cool. Uh, and as that copper on the roof oxidizes, we're going to make that gradient really sweet looking. Man, I always leave home without my umbrella. If only there were umbrellas in this game. All right, now we're going to turn our attention to this. Remember we built this thing? Well, I've been curing villagers, trying to get good trades. So the villagers offer trades, emeralds for goods, uh, but some of their prices are pretty steep. Now, if villagers get attacked by a zombie, they turn into a zombie villager. And if you cure them back into a regular villager, they love you forever and they offer you fantastic trades. I like, uh, well, uh-huh. I thought I had books in these chests, but I must have put them away. Why is this? Hmm. Right. So anyway, I've got some villagers in this little hidey hole over here. It's, uh, it's not pretty, but let me show you what I'm working with. We've got um, a rail system here to get villagers to where they need to go once they are cured. And I've got one or two in place down here already. Now this guy was sick. He was such a zombie villager. He was hopeless. And then I came along, splashed him with a weakness potion, gave him a golden apple, and now he is my best friend. So one coal, he gives me an emerald. I say that's a good deal. One emerald, he gives me a chest plate, and we're going to unlock more trades um, and he should be giving me great prices on all of the trades. So, since this is an armorer, he should be eventually providing awesome diamond chest plates, diamond boots, diamond hat, all that stuff for really cheap. Now, I thought I had a guy in here, but... Uh... Oh, that's right, I moved that guy. Okay, so over here... Um, yes... Over here, oh, they're in, okay. Let's go see these guys. Yeah, over here we've got our villager stock. Mm-hmm. As long as we keep beds here, we take a guy out, they make a new guy, and, uh, and we can use these villagers to make trades with. Now, they do have to be attacked by a zombie, so we do have a zombie <laughs> over here. This is zombie. Um, this is Zomboid. Let's get in the boat. Yeah, we could drive him around. He hits us in the back of the head. It's a win-win. Okay, so this guy, I believe I've cured two. Yes, I've cured this guy. So one piece of paper, he gives me a whole emerald. That's a fantastic deal. He also gives us efficiency books. That's a great deal. Blast protection. One ink sack for an emerald. Come on, how could you go wrong with these trades at one that used to be 34 pieces of paper for an emerald. Now it's one piece of paper for an emerald. But what I'm still searching for is a mending villager. Yeah, I want someone to sell me a mending book for one emerald, or at least cheaper than normal. The normal going rate is about, I think, 32 emeralds, that guy in town. So I kept trying to uh, make these villagers have mending trades, and they just... It wasn't working out the way that I wanted to, so I thought, well, how do I get a mending trade? How do I get a mending trade? Aha, I already have a mending villager. Remember Booker back in the town over here? It's moving day, Booker. Now I've always said, and in fact, it's our family motto. Why try to create a new mending villager when you already have a mending villager? Why are you still stuck here? So I'm going to take this guy and uh, relocate him. In the morning. First, we gotta sleep. All right, this sure is going to be a challenge. Let's get you out of here. Yes, yes, sorry about the bed. Now, I need you to come with me. Do you see it? 
Oh, are you stuck? Yeah, let me out. Oh, here you go. Okay. Nope. Your thing's up here. Look. Do you see? Uh, so maybe we do this. All right, this is much smoother sailing to get Booker to where he's got to go. Of course, we still have another giant hill to make it up, but that's future Ryan's problem. I have no idea where those llamas went. Okay. What do they say? Necessity breeds innovation? Something like that? We're gonna get creative here. Now, I don't want to spend too much time making it perfect because I think we're only gonna use it this one time, but you never know. When we have to transport villagers from over there to over here, maybe this will be useful in the future. At any rate, it's going to be the fastest way to get Booker up to where he needs to go. Boats don't go uphill on land, of course. So, we're gonna do this a different way. You stay here. I'm gonna go work on this. I need torches. Dude, are you hungry? Do you want some fish? Yeah? You like fish? He does. Alright, now I just... I just need you to go this way. Just this way. Just head over this way. Yep, you got it. Just go up the waterfall, huh? Let's look. Yeah, see, 32 emeralds and a book for a mending. Let's get that price lower, buddy. This way. This way. Yes, here we go. Go this way. Right this way, sir. Let me get that block out of your way for you. Now stay over there. Now we do this. Uh-huh. Sorry. Yes, right this way, sir. No. Come on. Just go right up here. It's easy. It is easy. Go. Yes! Alright, success. Go up here into the purification chamber. Uh huh. Let's get rid of that. Alright, right this way, sir. Right this way. You could... You don't have to bounce. Okay. Good! Now what? Alright, so I'm not looking for this guy to get zombified again. So what if I make a little cage here? And we're gonna put you in a boat. And take you out of the boat. Okay, now you're in the boat with... Uh, Alright. Nope, nope, no, no, no. Don't kill him. Don't want to kill Booker. Please don't kill Booker. After all that. Alright. 
So you guys gotta get in boats. Not the same boat. Alright, now you get in that boat. Yes, okay. Right, now I've got my splash potion of weakness and my golden apple to cure him. Uh, but I don't want to splash these two guys, so what I'm going to do is break the boat and try to get him in this minecart. If he makes it into the minecart, we're golden. Okay. Come with me, and you'll see a world of pure zombification. Go this way. Okay. Alright, here's the solution. Why you no go? There we go. Alright, where'd he go? Oh. Well, I guess... I guess that'll work. Ready? And the curing has started. Well, look who it is, Booker. What kind of trades do you have for us? Uh-huh. One emerald for mending. Yeah, baby, we're in business now. Alrighty, so the easiest way to do this is by rail. I've got Booker's house all set up and ready for him. And uh, now we just got to get him over here. And don't worry, we'll come back for you when the time is right. We just got to build an armory. Ready, Booker? Aha, and he found his workstation and everything. You go in here, close this up, and now we get rid of your minecart. You're home. You are home. And now we have a one emerald mending trade. I'll clean things up a bit down here on the front porch. And we'll be back for you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, you're excited to see me. I am excited to see you, too. What have you got for me today? Ah, paper trade. Okay, I have paper. Let's do this trade. Ah, don't mind if I do. As we close out the episode, I just wanted to talk a little bit future plans. So we've got Booker over here in his new house and we've got some other villagers on their way. I'm thinking I'm going to add a little house or say an armory, um, you know, something for each of the villagers functions over here on the cliff side. I think that would be really cool to have um, a very custom cliffside village for these useful villagers to live in and work in. And we can go over here and trade with them and it's like they live in the same neighborhood. The thing with the village over here is it is sort of cut off by this hill from where I live in the lighthouse. So I'm going to make a few changes over here. I, I'm eventually planning on getting rid of these few houses. <clears throat> As no one lives in them and they don't really serve any purpose right now. So I want to get rid of these houses and make some changes here too. So it's not so much a gate down to the village as it is just a continuation of the hill. I'd like to add a little bit of a, a more shallow gradient down the hill too, so it's not quite so steep, um, and, and make it more rolling, m rolling grassy hills instead of hard pathing. I'll probably get rid of this house too. It's not in use. I want to keep some of these houses intact 
still have our town square over here. I just, at the top of the hill, uh, no one lives there. I want to make it prettier um, since it's not really serving any purpose right now. Well, that is it for this episode, friends. Thanks for joining. I hope you like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and smash that subscribe button so that you can see these every week when they come out. And don't forget to leave a like if you did, in fact, like the video. And if you didn't like the video, then I guess still click that like button. Because why not, you know? That's it for this episode of Seaside Survival. Goodbye.